The purpose of this screencast is to review how to calculate conductance or resistance from patch or current clamp data. Recall that with the patch clamp technique, the experimenter clamps the memory potential at a chosen value, for example, plus 50 millivolts, plus 25, 0, minus 25, or minus 50 millivolts. This is similar to using a thermostat to set the desired temperature in a room. The experimenter then measures how much current flows through an ion channel at each of those memory potentials. How much current flows is given by Ohm's law, where the amount of current flow is dependent on the memory potential divided by the resistance. So as the researcher changes the memory potential to different values, the amount of current that flows through the ion channel will also vary. So we can take these data in which we know the change in memory potential and we can measure the amount of current and plot those on a graph. Now remember that the x-axis is equal to your independent variable and your y-axis is equal to your dependent variable. So in this case, the experimenter is changing the memory potential and recording the current flow. So memory potential is on our x-axis and current flow is on our y-axis. So if we look at the equation for a line, y is equal to mx plus b, we can ignore the b, that's just our intercept, and we're left with y is equal to mx so the slope, so the slope of our line with the patch clamp data is y is equal to mx, where x is v, and y is current, and so we have that our slope is equal to i divided by v. And if we go back to Ohm's law, what we'll see is that i divided by v is conductance. We can calculate the conductance by using Ohm's law. So the conductance is equal to change in current divided by the change in voltage. Now in this particular case, it's easy because our origin is at zero, zero. So we can take a point, let's go ahead and choose this point here, which is 50 millivolts and 0.5 picoamps. And we can calculate, therefore, that we have 0.5 picoamps and a 0 picoamps divided by 50 millivolts minus 0 millivolts. And so we can ignore those and we're left with half a picoamp divided by 50 millivolts. And so now we need to do our units conversion. So 0.5 times 10 to the minus 12 amps divided by 50 times 10 to the minus third volts. So to make the math easy, we can convert the 0.5 to 50 times 10 to the minus 14th amps divided by 50 times 10 to the minus third volts. So 50 divided by 50 is 1. 10 to the minus 14th divided by 10 to the minus third is 10 to the minus 11th. And now, since we're talking about conductance, we have units of Siemens. So we don't want to leave it there. We'd like to reduce this down to a exponent. And so we'd like to convert that to 10 to the minus 12th. And to do that, we would, our 1 would become 10. And so we're ultimately left with 10 pico Siemens. Now, if our origin had not been 0, 0. When we set this up, we would have had to have taken the current at one point minus the current at another point divided by the voltage at the first point minus the voltage at the second point. Now, if our channel was not ohmic, as it was in the previous example, or rather was rectifying, so that it had two regions of slope. 
we would actually need to calculate the slope for each of the regions. On the other hand, with the current clamp technique, the experimenter clamps the amount of current being injected into a cell at a chosen value so that a constant amount of current is injected into the cell. The experimenter then measures how much the memory potential changes due to this current flow. So in this particular example, we have zero current being injected, and then we have different amounts of current being injected. And for each of those currents, the researcher would measure how much the memory potential changed in response to that amount of current being injected into the cell. So we have seven different currents being injected into cell, and we have seven different memory potential changes being recorded. These data can also be plotted on an XY graph, where we take each of our currents and the resultant change in memory potential, and we plot those points on a graph. Now in this case, because our independent variable is current, current goes on our x-axis, and we're measuring the change of memory potential, so that's our dependent variable, and that will go on our y-axis. So again, if we think about the equation for a line, and we substitute that our x is current now, and our y is memory potential, then in this case, our slope is equal to v over i, and if you go back to Ohm's law, you'll see that v over i is resistance. So the slope of this relation is resistance. So now if we want to go ahead and calculate the resistance, we have that r is equal to delta v over delta i. And in this particular case, our origin is not at 0, 0. So our origin is actually at 0 nanoamps of current but a memory potential of minus 60 millivolts. So we can choose two points that we want to use. So let's say we use this point and our zero point and our zero current point. And so that would give us minus 50 millivolts minus minus 60 millivolts divided by one nanoamp minus zero nanoamps, and so that would leave us with 10 millivolts divided by one nanoamp, and again we need to now substitute in our SI units, so millis 10 to the minus third volts, and we have one times 10 to the minus ninth amps, and so 10 divided by one is 10, 10 to the minus third divided by 10 to the minus ninth gives us 10 to the sixth, and resistance is given in units of ohms. And so now we can reduce this further. It's given the abbreviation omega, and so we have that the resistance is 10 mega ohms. That concludes this screencast on calculating conductance or resistance from patch or current clamp data. If you have any questions, please bring them to recitation or office hours.